truth does not change because it is or is not believed by a majority of the people. Maybe you who condemn me are in greater fear than I who am condemned. It is a proof of a base and low mind for one to wish to think with the masses or majority, merely because the majority is the majority. If the butterfly wings its way to the sweet light that attracts it, it's only because it doesn't know that the fire can consume it. They dispute not in order to find or even to seek truth, but for victory, and to appear the more learned and strenuous upholders of a contrary opinion. Such persons should be avoided by all who have not a good breastplate of patience. Unless you make yourself equal to God, you cannot understand God, for the like is not intelligible save to the like. Make yourself grow to a greatness beyond measure. By a bound, free yourself from the body. Raise yourself above all time. Become eternity. Then you will understand God. Believe that nothing is impossible for you. Think yourself immortal and capable of understanding all, all arts, all sciences, the nature of every living being. Mount higher than the highest height. Descend lower than the lowest depth. Draw into yourself all sensations of everything created fire and water, dry and moist, imagining that you are everywhere, on the earth, in the sea, in the sky, that you are not yet born in the maternal womb, adolescent, old, dead, beyond death. If you embrace in your thought all things at once, times, places, substances, qualities, quantities, you may understand God. In space, there are countless constellations, suns, and planets. We see only the suns because they give light. The planets remain invisible, for they are small and dark. There are also numberless Earths circling around their suns. Desire urges me on, while fear bridles me. There is no top or bottom, no absolute positioning in space. There are only positions that are relative to the others. There is an incessant change in the relative positions throughout the universe, and the observer is always at the center. It is immoral to hold an opinion in order to curry another's favor. Mercenary, servile, and against the dignity of human liberty to yield and submit. Supremely stupid to believe as a matter of habit. Irrational to decide according to the majority opinion. 
as if the number of sages exceeded the infinite number of fools. Therefore, the perfect, absolutely and in itself, is one, infinite, which cannot be greater or better. This is one, everywhere, the only God, universal nature, of which nothing can be a perfect image or reflection, but the infinite. It is a poor mind that would think with the multitude because it is the multitude. Truth is not altered by the opinions of the vulgar or by the confirmations of the many. Of all men, they alone are at leisure who take time for philosophy. They alone really live for they are not content to be good guardians of their own lifetime only. They annex every age to their own. All those glorious fashioners of holy thoughts were born for us. For us, they have prepared a way of life. By others' labors, we are led to the sight of things most beautiful that have been wrested from darkness and brought into light. From no age are we shut out. We have access to all ages. If it is our wish, by greatness of mind, to pass beyond the narrow limits of human weakness, there is a great stretch of time through which we may roam. We may argue with Socrates, find peace with Epicurus, overcome human nature with the Stoics, exceed it with the Cynics. Since nature allows us to enter into fellowship with every age, why should we not turn from this paltry and fleeting span of time and surrender ourselves with all our soul to the past, which is boundless, which is eternal, which we share with our betters. But your achievement for others may easily come to be inscribed in the book of eternity, either that which is seen on earth or that which is believed to be in heaven. For that which you receive from others is a testimony to their virtue. But all that you do for others is the sign and clear indication of your own virtue. The ancients observed, and we also observe that sometimes things fall to earth, or some things leave the earth, or whatever parts we may be near. When he says, we may also say if we like that something has moved either upward or downward, but only with relation to a certain region or in a certain perspective. Something passing from us to the moon would look the opposite to those across from us on the moon. Where we would say something has ascended, those moon people, our anticephali, would say that something has descended. Such motions, therefore, make no distinction between up and down, hither and thither, with respect to the infinite universe but only the finite world in which we are or within the boundaries of the infinite world's horizons. Or, according to the calculations of the innumerable stars. Hence, the same thing with the same motion can be regarded differently and called at the same time rising and falling. Determinate bodies, therefore, do not have infinite motion. 
but finite and determinate calculation within their own limits. But that which is indeterminate and infinite has neither finite nor infinite motion and knows no difference of space or time. Copernicus not only moved the earth, but also set in motion the minds of men. Why would you think that God should in power enact an effect which in him are identical be determined as the limit of the convexity of a sphere rather than that he should be, as we may say, the undetermined limit of the boundless. The limit, I say, without limit, that I may differentiate the one infinity from the other. For God is the whole, comprehensive, and the complete totality of the infinite. But the universe is the explicit, though not the all-comprehensive, totality. If indeed we may in any wise use the term totality, where there is neither part nor boundary. Therefore the nature of one does comprehend boundaries, that of the other is bounded. And this is not the distinction between infinite and finite. The distinction is rather that one is the infinite, while the other does limit according to the nature of the totality and the whole being thereof. So that although it is entirely infinite, the infinity thereof is not completely comprehensive, for this would be repugnant to dimensional infinity. Make then your forecasts, my lords, astrologers, with your slavish physicians, by means of those astrolabes, with which you seek to discern the fantastic nine moving spheres. In these, you finally imprison your own minds, so that you appear to me as but parrots in a cage while I watch you dancing up and down, turning and hopping within those circles. We know that the Supreme Ruler cannot have a seat so narrow, so miserable a throne, so straight a tribunal, so scanty a court, so small and feeble a simulacrum that a phantasm can bring it to birth. A dream shatter, a delusion restore, a chimera disperse, a calamity diminish, a misdeed abolish, and a thought renew it again. So that indeed with a puff of air it were brimful, and with a single gulp it were emptied. On the contrary, we recognize a noble image, a marvelous conception, a supreme figure, an exalted shadow, an infinite representation of the represented infinity, a spectacle worthy of the excellence and supremacy of him who transcends understanding comprehension, or grasp. This is the excellence of God, magnified, and the greatness of His kingdom made manifest. He is glorified not in one, but in countless sons. Not in a single earth, a single world, but in a thousand, thousand worlds. 
I say, in an infinity of worlds.